Hey. We did it. It's new product time. New products. Okay, so um, last week we showed a lot of the Gawkin kits. Yes. So this week I have two Gawkin videos. Okay, two videos. Two Gawkin videos. The first one is the Gawkin gu guitar. Electric because guitar we, kit. You and I don't play uh, the guitar, but we have people on the staff here and they built the Gawkin guitar. And yep. here is the video. Okay. okay, and then um, if that no out. if that noise didn't get you, this one will. This is the video that we shot about the Gawkin Theremin, and these kits are great for young people, youngsters and oldsters, everybody. Yeah, they can actually meant to be built by like grade school kids. Science kits for adults. So here is the next video. Right, play your theremin. The musical stylings of Alain Shapiro. Okay, next up, um, we have a new product announcement. It's not in the store quite yet, but it's sign on up. its way. You sign up now, you'll get these. These are going to be going like Arduino hotcakes. <laughs> this um, is the Little Bits Arduino module. Right. This is for the Little Bits system, uh, which I think is really interesting. So this is, you know, a, basically a method for. Uh, Programming your little bits, interacting with your little bits using Arduino. It's not as powerful, you know, as an Arduino. Not all the pins are brought out, but there's three analog outputs, uh, known as PWM outputs, and then three analog inputs. And then you can actually do some like pretty intense manipulations using Arduino by, uh, you know, doing delay loops or like nonlinear control or mapping or like whatever on earth you possibly want to do. You can do it with this uh, Arduino module, and it's Arduino at Heart project. And I think it'll be really exciting. There'll be some really good tutorials. This is adds uh, controllability, programmability to Little Bits, which I think, you know, it's really good. I mean, Little Bits has the, the simplicity of all analog design, and then they've added some more complicated uh, um, bits since then, and now they're going full on Arduino. Yeah. <clears throat> Next up. New Make book by Mark Farnfelder. This is Maker Dad. Um, this is Father Daughter DIY Project. It can, of course, be. Mother, son, or well, father, he is son. he is a father, and, and he, he only has, has a, daughters, and he only has daughters. Yeah. So when he wanted to write a book, I think that he was like, well, you know, let's do a book that has to do, you know, that that reflects the kind of projects that I do oh. with um, my daughters, and they're they're fine for any kind of kid. You can have grandmothers do them with nephews. Yeah. You can have, uh, you know. Uh, Sisters and brothers even do them. Yeah. Older brother, but you know what older I like? Sister. Is there are so many like father and son books? Yeah, for so this long. is it's a, this a is break. father and, and daughter, and uh, um, we had people request this book, so we stocked it. Um, My father and I did projects together all the time. Yeah, it's probably why you're the engineer you are. Okay, check it out. Next up, now on to some hardware, Lady Ada. So okay. we, we got a couple different types of these. So I'm just going to show some beautiful photos first. Okay. So we'll what are these? Project. These are uh, like sort of DIY connectors for audio. And these are sort of, uh, the, we're actually going to get more of them, but these are the three most difficult to get or most universal in a way. So we, we're starting with these. So let's start at the beginning. Can, can you go to the beginning? So this one is a 2.5 millimeter stereo audio. So 2.5 millimeter stereo audio is often used in like audio recorders and some cell phones, hands-free stuff. Um, I, I just see it once in a while. It's a, small, it's a little thin version of what we normally call like a stereo jack. And then if you go to the previous image. Which one? The previous image. <laughs> Can you can you zoom out? Do you mean the one? Do you mean the previous is in the one before the one you saw? Yeah. Okay. Can you? Uh, yeah. There you go. Okay. So if uh, we zoom out, because I want to show that how how these are, they all have the similar construction. Thank you. 
Oh, wow, look at this. This is fancy. Um, so they all have this three-piece construction. There is the connector part on the very, sorry, the connector part on the very left, and you can see there's the, you know, the tip, ring, and then ground connector. And the ground is kept to the case ground. So this is a fully grounded connector, which is actually pretty good, I think. Um, usually the ground is connected to the metal casing anyways of, of a product. And you see there's uh, three tabs. There's a big ground tab and two littler tabs that you can solder any wires to. So you can use a stranded core wire, you know, 20, 22 gauge to 30 gauge is probably fine. Uh, you can go thicker than if you want, but those are, those are pretty standard gauges that people would use. And then you can crimp that, uh, the wires on. And then uh, they slide into the middle part, which is, you can see there's a spring. And I'll, can I show the, I'll show the metal spring later on the overhead. Um, and, and the metal base screws in, and then it's like a nice solid metal connection. These are really, really durable. And the spring provides very good strain relief. And what I like about the spring is that it, it's flexible enough to give good strain relief no matter what kind of wire you're using. And the, the, when, you, when you put it together, the spring is kind of held at the back. So this is the 2.5 millimeter stereo audio for like cellular stuff and maybe some other like weird connectors, uh, uh, audio recorders. Next up, we also have this one. No, this one. Which one? Well, this like, is that one. Yeah, this one. This one. Yep. Yeah, stop. This is a stereo three point. Sorry, this is a four connector TRS tip ring ring sleeve. Uh, 3.5 millimeter. This is. Well, I mean, these are traditionally known as like smartphone or, you know, smart whatever tablet audio connectors. Um, so it has um, ground, microphone, as well as left and right. So, you know, you can use this with a TRS standard stereo tip ring sleeve audio, but a lot of times if you want to connect to like, um, like an iPhone or a phone or a tablet or something else that has a microphone as well as audio or maybe it has like a differential stereo, I don't know, so it has something different. You'll need a, f a four connector, connector, so here you go. You can also, again, you can use this in um, a three pin socket if you need to, just leave the second ring, second ring disconnected. Okay. And then finally, what else do you want me to show? The, the last one. This is a uh, quarter inch, 6.35 millimeter. Can you also zoom out? Yeah, I can do that right now. Yeah. Thanks. Yay. Yeah, this is like a big connector, so that's a big photo. Um, this is a, it's a stereo. They are kind of used for like, a, often for like headphone jacks or audio equipment. Um, this is a stereotype, but again, you can use it for mono. Just don't use like one of the channels. Uh, so left, right, and ground. Um, but yeah, like if you're building modulars, you'll use this. If you're building, uh, you know, synthesizers, or you're dealing with like big headphone jacks, chances are you'll end up with this connector. So these are really great for making your own cables. Uh, actually, you were using these connectors for a while to make my own cables, and I was like, oh, yeah, I should probably have them in the store. They're very handy. Okay, I'm just actually gonna click through. Next up, we have. What? Uh, What's going on? Oh, because I, I want to do them in a certain order. Oh, okay. Do you want me to get rid of us first? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Click through. Um, yeah. So we have next uh, a bunch of bar graph connectors. These are 10 LED bar graph connectors. You can see them. They're actually just 10 LEDs, and they're molded into plastic, and you, they plug very nicely into a breadboard, which I'll show you. And then we have them in a variety of colors amber, pure green, which is the bluer green, not the yellow green, blue and then a really bright white. Um, they're just handy to use in a breadboard. The pins are nice and long. Um, they have, they're a 0.1 inch spacing. And let me show the demo on the overhead because it's okay. actually... <coughs> it's overhead time. Overhead time. So you'll need to... <coughs> hold on, turn on this light. And then maybe, is it focused? Okay, so this is a bar graph. I have this connected to an Arduino, which is just battery powered. And then as I turn this trim knob, you can see the LEDs light up. And they just, you know, I just have like one resistor per LED. Um, so this is the white bar graph. You see it's a very nice white color. And then let me plug in, this is I think blue. No, this is amber. This is the amber one. That's a cool demo. All right, all right, amber. And then we also have the pure green. Oh, got it in backwards. Don't forget, they're just like LEDs, so you have to put them in the right way or they're backwards. 
uh, the green, which is really, bing, really bing, bright. Bing, 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 bing. That's cool. Green. And then I also have blue. So we got these colors in first. And um, we're also going to get red and yellow and yellow green. But um, I want, actually, these were the, the, the other ones weren't bright enough for me. So I had the factory like re, um, remake them. And in the meantime, we just got the, the bright blue, white, green, pure green, and amber. Yeah. OK. OK, that's it on that. OK, next and, up. Yeah, next up. So the other thing that we have. Um, I guess because you just showed it, um, do you want me to just yeah, go to this? The, the yeah, so we got, this is what you just showed. Yeah. So this is a uh, panel mount potentiometer. Uh, I'm not quite sure why it's being shown in like the ground line of the breadboard. But you can plug it into any part of the breadboard. It has a 0.2 inch spacing. It's also a panel mount, which is which is kind of nice. You can uh, you know connect it onto. It comes with a, a locking nut if you go to the next photo. Comes with a locking nut and washer, so you can panel mount it. So you can use it in a breadboard, as you saw here, or uh, you know, to do my demo, yeah. or you can panel mount it. We have it in 1K, 10K, and 100K. So yeah. there you go, all oh, the case. And you know, just real quick, I'm going to click through these. So these are the photos of the bar graphs, really close up, just in case you wanted to see them. We spent a lot of time on these photos. You can so. also go to the product page and see them in like 3,000 pixels yeah. size. OK, next up. Next up. Um, we've got these little, these are so handy. These are the little DIY USB. Um, packs or kits, or what would you call this? Like they're little yeah, these are also they're like the audio connectors. They're like DIY connectors. Yeah. So if you want to make your own USB cable, or you have to do some sort of you know DIY USB connection, which always seems to happen. Um, like I'm always making like weird custom cables, or like I have a breadboard uh, Arduino or something, and I want to connect a USB connector to it, or I'm yeah. doing some power thing, and I want to mm. you know a USB A jack or B jack. We already have these in two piece snap together, and these are. Um, they're like slim style. They're a little tougher to use because they they press fit in, but they're also a lot more elegant. And they're less likely to kind of come apart. Although the other ones, I haven't had them come apart, but like these are a little bit more durable, I think, uh, and they're also slimmer. But they're also tougher to use because you have to solder the wires, and instead of a sandwich, it actually slides in from the end. So like once you kind of put it together, it's really hard to undo. So we have these in micro USB, oh, okay. standard micro USB B, and then we have them in A. This one? Yeah. Which is standard, like, male A style. Uh, and then it, you can see in this photo, oh, go back one. Uh, you can see the connector. You just had to solder. You see the little solder tabs on the connector, like, right below Phil, right there. And then there's also a little strain relief guy. These are, like, kind of Apple style or, like, Samsung style cables. Um, it's a little more elegant. And then this one's a weird one. This is actually used for, I think, like, you know, you put it into, like, an injection molding or, like, a, some sort of molding. It's yeah. actually a micro uh, B socket, which is rare. But I kind of found this at the same factory that makes the um, the other connectors. So if you're like, if you want to make something where maybe you could use like Sugru to make your own micro USB oh, that's a good socket, idea. and um, the connectors are pretty easy to solder to. You can sort of see them there. Maybe oh, this next no back one. Yeah, that one. They stick out. Oh, hide me. You can see where my face was. There's five pins that stick out. So this, you know, you can use 30 gauge wire and connect to it pretty easily. So you can do your own socket connector. I don't know. I, I'm not, I have any particular use for this one, but I thought other people might find it handy. Yeah. Look at those big connectors. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then to, um, we're gonna go a l like four minutes over on the show for some questions, but we have uh, okay, we a couple speakers. more products. Yeah. So next up, speakers. Thin speakers. I also show these on the overhead because these are these are pretty small. Okay. Um, these are thin little speakers. We have two kinds. Uh, one is a teenier metal speaker. And I don't have an audio demo for this. You just have to believe me. And this is a teeny audio speaker. It's about you know one inch in diameter. It doesn't have as wide of a range for the speaker. Goes oh, only 600 to 10k, um, and but it's half a watt. It's fairly loud. And then we also have this sort of thin plastic speaker, which is a little bit lighter, actually, but it's also bigger. So it's going to be a little bit louder. It also has a wider range. Mm -hmm. um, these are actually designed for use in, um, both of these are designed for use in uh, talking greeting cards, like when you go to the store and it, like yeah. you can record a message or just plays a song when you open it. So they're super skinny, um, but they're pretty good quality. I'm, I'm you know, happy with these guys. Uh, we're going to do some future projects with them. Also, like, people wanted to 
you speaker, basically like the draw audio speaker, yeah. they want to use it in their own projects, and I'm like, well, we don't have that, and now we, now we do. Let's say if we were going to release, like, a, I don't know, an open source phone thing, that would be very handy. Yeah, this would be like your speaker. So like a oh, okay. quarter watt and uh, 0.5 watt, and they're um, eight ohm speakers each. I sure hope we're working on an open source phone thing. Um, so here's a couple of photos. Nice um, photos. Yeah. Comes with wires, pre-attached. Yeah. yeah, nice. Okay, and then last up, a new product bill. What is this? This is um, an altimeter. <laughs> this is uh, a barometric pressure sensor based on the uh, Freescale, I believe is the company, uh, MPL 3115A2, which sounds and looks a lot like the MPL 115, but it's actually the 3115, which is a lot more precise. This is an I squared C barometric pressure sensor, and it's good enough that you can actually use it as an altimeter. It can tell you your altitude. So good for like wearable projects or the projects where maybe you want to be very precise about the barometric pressure, which is used for weather sensing or like what altitude you're at. Um, also, like you know, you have these um, wearables that tell you how many stairs you climbed or whatever. So like you can use something like this to tell the, the altitude that you've moved. Yeah. Um, this one can do, I think half a meter resolution compared to the BMP 180, which can do a quarter meter resolution. I don't know that, I know that this is less precise than BMP 183, 180 or 183, but it's very close. Um, it's also like maybe easier to use because you don't have to do weird calibration reading and writing. With the MP, BMP 180, there's a lot of code involved in like getting the data into altimeter mode. This actually, you just set a bit and say altimeter mode and it does all the calculations for you, which is actually what the BMP 180 should do, but for some reason didn't. Um, this is very easy. And then you just read like meters okay. off of it. So if you want to like keep it simple, this is a really good altimeter. Thus concludes new products.